Hello and welcome to the new video. Today we're going to take a look at a legend team from a Japanese player here with Weekly Tough. Weekly Tough learning also Disarming Voice, which I think it learned since last season, which definitely makes this Pokemon a little bit easier to play as well. It's now going to get to the move a little bit faster. It's a very interesting Pokemon, but this team in general is very special as you're going to have the Vigoroth in the lead being um, basically somewhat of a neutral Pokemon. So basically, here you play this team like, every time you encounter something neutral in the lead, you're going to stay in. Like, no matter what, you're going to stay in. Even if it's like slightly bad, you're mostly going to try to stay in. But um, for this one, you're going to try to, when like it's really bad, you're going to usually say swap, I think, the Wiggly Tough, at least that's how the Japanese player played it. But otherwise, you're going to swap out, I guess, into the Mage Chim if you encounter a Mage Chim against yourself, just to have your Wiggly Tough still in the back. But um, here we're going to see as well the power of Charm. Rigti Tough is such a cheap but also a very effective Pokemon for the Go Battle League as you're going to be able to completely destroy something like a Sableye, which is really nice. But also against the current meta, it's really cool because you're also going to be able to resist Lick from Lickitung. So this team in general slays Lickitung. Every single Pokemon is decent against Lickitung, which is really cool to see. But also you're going to have like double counter, which is really cool because at nearly every team right now, there's going to be a Steel type. It's either Directory Steel or like the Alone Sand Slash or even the Steelix and if you have two counter users on your team it's really cool but of course against opponents that run Medicham in the lead it can be a little bit tricky. Here we're going to have another very neutral matchup but as we saw already they're going to have a lead matchup that I can also still play out with actually both of my Pokemon but mainly with my Medicham so I don't really care too much about how this is going to go. They're going to go for the Weather Ball which is nice I can still go for another Body Slam which is amazing for me as this is going to get the final shit by the opponent but sadly I would not be able to farm them down but luckily the opponent decides to swap out into their Medicham allowing me to align my um yeah, my charm user here, which is going to be nice. But the one issue of the track which I have kind of with the Rigti Tough is that we're going to have the normal typing here, which is going to make counter at least neutral. I guess you're never going to have like anything that really does both for you, like resisting ghost type moves, like the Shadow Claw, as well as like Lick, but also being not then weaker against counter users. I think they only have like normal typing, you have dark typing, and I think that's it what resists ghost types. I think it's actually already it, so like normal and um, dark. And both of those typings are of course weak to the counter users, but here we're going to still be able to win this game. Um, I put every game in there that I did with this team that was with Disarming Voice. I actually played this team in the beginning with my wrong Wiggly Tough at like one, at 1500 CP, which had still play rough, but Disarming Voice is needed on this Pokemon. And honestly, I didn't check that I didn't have like Disarming Voice for like seven battles, which is kind of embarrassing, but still, this team was definitely interesting to play. Here, for example, very neutral again, we're going to have the Swampert. Our entire team is kind of neutral against Swampert, which is kind of fine, so like we don't really care on which matchup it is, but you kind of want to align your Pokemon. And it kind of looks like I would be able to realign my Pokemon even here in the two shade scenario, which is good to know. But also my opponent decides to swap out into the Vigoroth, allowing me to um, swap into my Medicham. I still have to go for a charge move eventually, but not right now. I actually can now go for the full farm loan if I want to which will allow me to go for a Psychic against the incoming Swampert, but Swampert should have a move stored, I think, so it's going to be a little bit awkward, as exactly they're going to go straight for the Hydro Cannon. This is going to get my final shield, but the Psychic should be enough to knock out the opponent here for sure, as we're going to see the opponent is going to have a Bastion in the back, and that's going to be a little bit tricky, because my two answers for Bastion are fairly low, so I decide to swap out into my Vigoroth, and luckily I'm still going to be able to reach this Bulldoze, so there is nothing really to worry about if this is going to be able to knock out the opponent from this range, and we can move on to the next game. We're going to have the Victory Bell in the lead. This is going to be a fairly awkward one, of course, because the Victory Bell is actually really decent against this team. You're going to be able to get two shields as your Vigoroth, which is going to be nice, but then what do you do? Like, do you go into your Victory Tough and try to charm them down? They actually make a great play by going into their Medicham here, catching the move, which basically prevents them from using another shield. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Victory Tough, but I'm also going to decide to use a shield here because we know that they have the victory bell in the lead. We're going to know that they're basically going to um, try to fast move me down. So any damage that I can shield up is, I think, decent for me. Same goes for this one. As this leaf blade, which is coming through, would do a ton of damage. I'm going to try to get a charge move off and see what they're going to run in the back. Maybe it's a Bastion. They're going to let this move go through. It's a Charizard. And this is really bad. And this, in general, one of the weaknesses of this team is Charizard. Our backline is really weak against it. Our leader Vigoroth can actually still deal with it. Like, it's not really a bad matchup for Vigoroth, but the backline is really weak to it, so... 
yeah, Charizard is a tricky one. I don't really see Charizard too often nowadays, also because Lantern is still a thing. So, um, don't know really how often you're going to encounter Charizard, but here you're going to see already the devastating power of Charizard against this team. I'm not going to say that this is not a weakness, this is definitely a weakness. But still, for example, for matchups like this here against the Steelix, this team is really nice. Here they're going to swap out into the Medichim, getting hard counter immediately by the Wicked Tough, but actually the entire team can deal with Steelix, because Steelix's main source of damage is going to be the Dragon-type damage. And even our Wicked Tough is going to be able to still resist this, which you're going to see here, going to come in clutch and getting to the next charge move, which is going to be the Ice Beam. So, um, you're actually going to have a half decent time with the Wicked Tough as well, doing some decent damage there. Of course, they also going to resist the charm, but um, you're still going to do more damage than the opponent does with their Dragon Tail. Here we're going to see Dragon Tail coming through and as well breaking Swipe, of course, dropping our attack. But I don't really care too much about it. I can let this move go through. I can try to swap out here and try to get more energy and I will be able to go for the full farm loan before they can do anything. And in the back, there's lurking the worst possible Pokemon to face. It's going to be the Trevenant. I'm gonna go for the Bulldoze first. I'm going to let this move go through because at least I have a ton of energy on my Medicham, which is basically what I was hoping for here right now for me to win this game. But I was also hoping that I somehow maybe get with a Body Slam spam a shield from the opponent or put them into a range where I can just counter them down but turns out this is not going to be the case and now it's going to be a very tough ending for us. We're going to see the shield coming up against the seed bomb of course I have to shield everything from the opponent and I'm going to use another shield as they decide to go for another seed bomb and luckily they only have one shield left so I will be able to go for my own ice punch that's going to get the shield and I'm still going to be able to outspeed them allowing me to win this game against basically the worst possible Pokemon to face in the bag. Next opponent, we're going to see the Vigoroth against the Mantine. This is going to be, again, a very neutral matchup for us. So we can just go for the Body Slam. But um, this is going to still be a little bit of a diff difficult one here. So you're going to be able to just go and try to go for another charge move. Let's see here. They're going to go for the Aerial Ace. We will be able to just go for our own Body Slam. As we're going to basically get to the moves at the same time, I'm always going to be able to win CMP as we can still survive this next incoming area ace. Their fast move is not resisted, mine is, but still we're going to do more damage with Body Slam compared to an area ace and we win the CMP tie here. They can decide if they want to realign or not, but they decide to not realign the Pokemon here, which is fine for me. In comes now the Reggie Steel and we can kind of hard counter the opponent here as they're going to have two Pokemon weak to fighting in the back. It's most likely why they also stayed in, in the beginning for it. But now it's going to go down between like the opponent's Diggersby, my Medicham and the opponent's Regis. Did I make a crucial mistake here? I'm gonna stay in for too long against the opponent's Diggersby thinking that I could farm them all the way down here. But sadly, they're still going to get to another charge move here. Forcing me to let this move go through, but luckily I didn't get the debuff from Scorching Sands, which of course I think is only a 30% chance. So it's not that high, but we're gonna see Focus Bars coming through. We still want to try to go for the full farm down here with Medicham, especially as we are not debuffed yet. I'm not going to swap out at all. And as you can see, we can just go for more ice punches, trying to get the shields from the opponent. I think I'm going to be fine at this point. We're going to see that they're going to let this move go through. And yes, I can nearly farm them all the way down. But Wrigley Tough can even take a move here. This is actually risky because I don't know if a Flash Cannon would have knocked me out. I'm not sure if they did even had the Flash Cannon at this point. Of course, they had only Zap Cannon. But um, still, we're going to be able to win this game. And... This is going to be so free. Basically, this entire team beats a weekly tough, which is just insane. Like, this team is going to be so nice for this one. But, of course, maybe we're going to lose against other Pokemon here. We're going to encounter the Gligam. And in hindsight, I should have not swapped out here, I feel like. I think this is not the ideal play. I'm going to let this next move go through. It's going to be the Aerial Ace, and I'm going to go down. But if they have a Medicham in the back, which is fairly likely, I just screwed up big time. And let's see what they're going to have in the back. It's going to be... Let's see. Let's see. It's going to be another Gliscor. So, okay. This time around, I didn't screw up completely, but I still would have not played it like I played it here right now. As um, I feel like this was not really the ideal scenario how I should have played it. I should have just stayed in with my Vilgaroth against the Gliga, I feel like, because I still would be able to do some decent damage against the opponent's um, Lickitung with all my other Pokemon. 
And now I'm going to be forced to try to catch a move here. Let's see if this worked out well for me. It's going to be the Night Slash, which is fine for me. They didn't get the buff here. And I can try to go for the full farm now as the opponent decides to swap out into their Licky Tongue. They're still forced to go for a Body Slam. They cannot lick me down, luckily. And I'm still going to get a Psychic off as I can still try to reach to another charge move, but they're going to knock me out beforehand. And I have to try to keep something here. Either like the energy or I still have to try to give, keep the shield alive. Let's see. We can still go for a charge move. They're going to let this move go through. So both of us are still a shield. I can go for a charge move. And as long as I don't have two moves stored, I'm going to be fine. They're going to get the attack buff as well, which would have been so scary. But like this, we're still going to be able to win the game. And we will see another Licky Tang in the lead. This is going to be amazing for me as we can see the carbine coming in. I can still go for the Bulldoze, which is going to be fine for me as I can do some decent damage against them. It's, I guess, my best matchup. I still think I lose this in the Zero Shield scenario, which we might find out now. Is they going to go for the Moon Blast? I am actually going to be able, yeah, I'm going to lose this in the zero shield scenario. Carbink is just insane. We do like neutral damage and super effective damage with my charge move, but still not enough to do anything against the Carbink. But I'm forced to go ahead and go to my Medichem as they decide to swap back into their Licky Tongue. I can go for the Psychic here, going to do some decent damage if they're going to let this move go through, which they do. And then now in basically body slam range after a few more counter, I'm going to try to keep my um, Medichem alive here. I think that they might be weak in the back as I can still reach to another Ice Punch. Let's see if they're going to shield this move up or not. They decide not to and they're going to see, like show me the final Pokemon being their own Medichem and this is going to be again a good game. As basically Wigglytuff is so strong in the current meta, I can highly make, recommend you to try this one out. Here against Alone Ninetales, again, you do exactly the same as said before. You kind of want to stay in against those neutral leads. This is not something that you're going to be able to win in the two-shield scenario, but you might be able to get a shield advantage or something. Or maybe if the opponent going to not shield the first attack there, you can just go for the full farm down. Which is fine for you, because you really want to realign with this team. We might see a Medicham in the back again, very likely there, and we see that immediately coming in. We're not going to be able to get the next one off, sadly, but we're still going to get them lower, and we can go for the full charm down. Now it depends on what they're going to run in the back. It's most likely something like the Sable, I would guess, at this point. Let's see what it is. It is actually the same. Like, again, I actually don't know the battles. It's just guessing by what I see from the team. And this is something that's actually really important to do for like Go Battle League in general. Having knowledge on what teams are common and what teams you might expect and what cores are especially common. Like if you um, see, for example, an Alolan Sandslash, it's very likely that it's going to be a Medichim in the back because the coverage are really, really nice. I actually made it short recently, like if you want to search for it, for the top 10 cores for the Great League. So if you want to take a look at this one, it's really important important to also just play around those cores. So yeah, here we're going to actually encounter a Pokemon that I really didn't want to face, at least in this kind of scenario, which is going to be the Magnezone. Very cool Pokemon, made a video about this one as well. There is a Legend team around, which was really cool, where I even battled a Zionic in it. Also on my channel, of course. And also, while you uh, buy it, please feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe. I've kind of stopped saying that, but um, I should definitely start doing it again because it really helps out the channel and I really want the channel to grow and grow the community. So feel free to do this. Would appreciate it. Here we're going to encounter the Pelipper, which is going to be a little bit of a tr difficult one, especially as my opponent makes a great play here by going for the Hurricane. Again, I love to shout out also great plays by the opponents. Great um, call for going for the big move instead of the bait move. So... In general, cool cool there. We're going to be able to use a shield onto, onto the weather ball. I have to try to farm them all the way down. Or go for two ice punches. Um, you're going to see me not throwing all the bubbles here. They're going to use a shield. I can still get the knockout, which is amazing for me. And like this, I can still win this game. So... Good game there to the opponent, still a nice play with the Hurricane. Let's take a look at the next opponent. We're going to have the Dragonite in the lead. How do you play this one out? Again, you have a fairly neutral lead and you're going to stay in here. This is exactly what you kind of want to do. This is just a Dragon Claw, so I know that it can win the Zero Shield scenario against the opponent's Dragonite as a Body Stem does more than a Dragon Claw. And Body Stem is coming through, going to get the shield. This is fine. I can let this move go through and now I can realign. I can go to my Rick Tough. The opponent decides to swap out. We have our Mage Champ against the opponent's Rachi Steel, exactly what we want. And honestly, I'm not sure about the moves on the Medicham. I should have said that before as well. I actually didn't look it up. And uh, maybe the running power punch could be the case. Could see that definitely. Um, which would have been cooler in this scenario here. But I am still making a mistake by going for the full farm, I feel like. But I'm still going to be able to now get enough energy to go for ice punches against the opponent's Dragonite if they want to go back into this one. 
but we're gonna see again the Dragon Knight coming back in. I can go for the Ice Punch, get the knockout if they would let this move go through, which they don't. And in the back, there's lurking a Lantern. We will be able to still survive one charge move, but do they gonna go for the um, Thunderbolt first or do they gonna go for the Surf? This is the question. Do I shield the first one? Do I shield the second one? I am going to decide to shield the first one, which is going to be a Surf. So great play by me shielding the wrong move again. But I guess it was kind of an obvious one. As I now can still go for the Thunderbolt. Gonna get me low, but is it low enough? It is not. As Weekly Tough is still hanging in there, getting the knockout, and we can move on into the final game of today's video. We're going to have a Lantern against us. This is going to be an interesting one here again, as we can still stay in here. And I feel like it's more safe to go for Body Slam, but the opponent gives me the opportunity to just go for the Body Slam against a Gliger instead as well, which I fairly take there anyway. I would have went for the Body Slam anyway. I just go up to the boulders just in case the opponent decides to to shield or something. I can go into my weekly tough, which might be the right call, might not be the right call, but I don't think they're going to be um, having another answer for Medicham in the back based on how they play and based on the team they have. Um, could be something like Superior based on the Lantern and lead, but also something like a Medicham would make a lot of sense, so something like this I predict. Again, I don't remember this game at all. I don't know what's going to be in the back. It might be a Medicham, might be a Superior, might be literally a Pikachu with a hat on, who knows, it's going to be a Swampert, so this does not make any sense at all, so please don't use the team from the opponent because you're going to have a Lantern and a Swampert, which is going to be both weak to grass, and if you encounter one grass type Pokemon, this game is already over at that point then, so yes, you're going to have, of course, your Gligar, which is still okay against grass, but again, it doesn't even resist it, so... It's just an offensive check, basically. So I would not really recommend you the opponent's team here, just because there are Superior around, there are Venusaur around. It's a little bit tricky, but we can still still see here the Psychic coming through. We're gonna get the knockout, and the Lantern is gonna go down as well. So this is going to be it for today's video. Very cool team to try out. Definitely check it out, and i see you then. Bye-bye.